Oh, we got a hot bubble, folks. What do we do with that? Is Put that it. a hand sculpted mold from the Arctic uh, Northwest, Michigan, Detroit? Look at this. It's filling up perfect. It's glowing too on the bottom. Let's check that perfect. out. Perfect. Is that, that's not snow on there, it's crackle texture. Explode. Now that is one sort of vestile I may have never seen before. Welcome to the show, folks. We're experimenting here in the beginning of the show with some hot molten action. And even though this was 2,000 degree glass, and it was in that mold for about a good 30 <laughs> seconds, that's because Chris turned on his robotic turning power. That's right. Put it back in the freezer. You want to go back in the freezer? 20 years of experience, folks. We're gonna pack that one up nice and neat, get it right back into thine freezer. I'm whipping up a pontiel here because Chris is looking to make this into an iceberg sculpted pitcher of some sort of wintry, frosty, delicious. Ah, maybe not. Lost Explode a little bit of like it up Frodo. here because of the iciness. Recycle the sack. You see right here, folks, we got a hole right here in the piece. Whoa, that's hot stuff. Hello, folks. It's a beautiful day. As our warmer upper, which was the original plan, I'm gonna sculpt up one of the same exact open style hearts we did on last show. There was such a big uh, excitement around that piece. I'm gonna do a different color here, white and iridescent gold as we get set up to go into a really cool gnome-tastic show folks we've upgraded our gnomes we've got an incredible one and done selection and we've got actually three really cool add-ons and specialty things that are going to go on around here tonight this is just going to be a white and gold open heart <laughs> Ooh, look at that twirlage i'm trying to twirl as i'm pulling so and i'm trying to do it even so that the heart is not a lopsided heart because then you get an irregular beat. <laughs> Bink. Yeah, well, we hope you guys are doing amazing today. It's gonna be a beautiful show. Two final touches up here on the heart. We cut that round circle, touched it back together. I'm going to take the tweezies here, pinch together, and make a finalized, beautiful connection here like so and then once we get it torched we're going to knock it off here going to torch the bottom and then we're going to iridize it with the gold we've got white on here and gold this will be the final light and tender heat not too much heat because it'll totally stick to the pipe here i'm trying to wiggle it so it doesn't stick Ooh, metallic shine baby One little puff of air will do just fine. This guy's not too chubby. Now there's a couple things we've changed about the gnomes and I'm gonna talk about them as we move along this process. This will be the starter gnome and we're gonna have a flower on the head of it. It's orange, we're gonna do oranges and pinks and golds as the body. And then we're gonna have an orange or red flower on it depending on how it all turns out. The first thing that's been changed about the gnome is that we've removed the boots. And a lot of the pictures we've seen and a lot of gnome content, you guys were all real gnome lovers around here. The gnomes don't necessarily always have boots. They're really hard to recreate, they're hard to get symmetrical and have look really good. And a lot of times if we wanted to get enough beard action going on, it would interfere with the boots being in the way. So we've converted the boots to a gnome's belt and that process starts right now by giving it the old squish here and giving this a little bit of a Liberty Bell shape. And I'll cut into it right here like this and make that spot available for a nice 
good old fashioned sturdy gnome belt application. So we're gonna go for the belt here. Black's a really soft color, it goes on really smooth. I can squish it down really easy. The trick is covering up the two part connection to start in the beginning with the beard. Beautiful shape, great heat here. Lay it on smooth like butter. I like to give it a little bit of a beveled edge like that to it. That's actually the second part now and the reason the beards became so incredible ah. is because they're a two-part beard stacking situation. It's a double-decker beard just like a bus. Exactly. That's Doesn't a good, only get uh, more epic with the more layers. The other really cool thing about this two-part beard application and the growth of the beard is that we've gotten it to the point with all these tendrils that you can actually decide whether the wind is coming from the east or the west with this new style of beard. Nostrils are a specialty request, folks. I can't grab it at all. We've got Rebecca, who was born in Holly, Michigan, but is now watching from Boca Raton, Florida. Woo! Wow. Looking That's good. Insane. <laughs> it's crazy, especially you, if you guys didn't see that, there was a little bit of wax on the shears that Jake was using, so it was real slippery for, for him to even grab the pipe. It was slippery. It's very important to make sure that you uh, keep the tools clean. So I'm going to hit these puppies up while he's doing it and make sure that I warm them up with the hot glass and let that burn off so he doesn't have any issues with it. Yeah, it almost caused some treachery but Chris understood the situation and Chris was able to hold steady and even was pushing down a little bit when I would have probably been grabbing the pipe and pushing down. And so we're going to get the band on there and then we're going to be switching up and putting on a flower right into the side this guy's situation. A little less shape on the next one. Now you give a little squash to the band or the brim of the hat here, and it's looking good. It's got a really nice looking look. It comes down over the nose, covering the eyes because gnomes are magical. Bright orange, two-tone orange on the bottom. We got a black belt, iridescent gold nose. That's a transparent gold band as well, Oliver brought over, and then a bright pink hat on there. And so now we're gonna have to make a judgment call as to what color flower and what size flower is gonna look the best. Oliver was really thinking ahead here. He's got the pieces lifted up, getting a little extra heat on those flowers. He's looking to get them to just over a thousand degrees. Torch that punty if you want, Jake. Torch the punty, there you go. We do have something to say about jumping gnomes. I'm so tired of jumping gnomes. Why are they so rambunctious? Go for it. I didn't even do anything. I didn't even lift it off anything. It just jumped. He literally jumped. Doctor him up, baby. Doctor him up. You saw it, folks, right here on the gathering point. Another world-famous jumping gnome. I know. <laughs> Whose home is this guy going to? Now, well, the trick for me at this moment is going to be heating up the tip 
to pull it out and shape the hat without overheating it too deep and melting out that flour we just applied onto the body. So really, he survived perfectly, folks, except for the end of his little sharp hat, which they're working on right now. But let's see if we can get in there. Look at that flower. That thing is sweet looking. I think you could probably roll the end of that right in some frit, too. Right now, we got one flower on there. You start to solidify. You're going to go for a light one. Maybe a yellow one. Yep. There's dos. Oh, look at that. Who is it? That's nice. All right, now let's do a quick bling bling and we'll get it out of here. Do another blingification. Then we have to do another blingification, you guys, because when you go back and reheat once you've blinged it in the reduction atmosphere, if you go back when the reduction's not happening, it actually burns off the iridescence and you have to bring mm. that precious iridescence metals back to the surface again. And this is looking good. Folks. Oh, it's the fundamental move. Yeah, it's a classic. It's just the same style. If you join us, if you missed the beginning of the show, you may not have seen, or you may, may, may have saw last week, the style of open heart that was made. Right off the bat, I can notice he's got more glass than I had going in the beginning, but he put two lines in it and it's flat. It looks like a ribbon right now, instead of being a round, twisted, symmetrical, rope-like situation. Look at this. Oh, baby. <laughs> All right, he's going for the snip. He's got half the heat. He's going for the tuck, and this is actually looking really tasty. A secondary style of open heart. Oh, yeah. That connection there is just enough that it sticks so it doesn't fall apart when he reheats it here. Well, that's kind of cool looking, and it's more of a ribbon, a beautiful like ribbon that you might make a ribbon for a present or something like that. It's definitely got a cool texture to it. I remember that's going to be bright red. If you guys are new to the show, when we're blowing glass here, all the color, this is still about 1,000, maybe 1,200 degrees, and so the colors aren't going to look true. How recreatable are these, Chris? Do you think we're going to put multiple of these on the website? Oh, yeah, they're recreatable for sure. What color were those hearts? They were red, weren't they? They were red. All right, we're gonna do a pink. This is gonna be pink and silver and red hearted. Yeah, no. I went through a phase where I was doing a lot of Venetian glass, which has a lot of gold leaf on it. And the more you reheat them, the more it burns off and gets lighter. All those colors that we have on our shelf over here, hundreds of colors, we have to do compatibility tests with those to make sure that those colors expand and contract the same dip, same speed and temperature as our clear crystal, which is very important. So after this, uh, Oliver's gonna be bringing over schnoz. You're going for a pink of some sort to match the body. Nice hat, exactly like the last one that you brought. Watch how hard I give this the whoosh.
All right, I'm ready when you are, Jake. Okay, I'm coming I'm right here. Wow. Woo! That is sweet. Yeah, so what's my working temp here, and how careful do I need to be about burning? You're not going to be, uh, unless it jumps off again, which I know you're going to be torching that punny, uh, he'll be fine. Okay. Boy, that is a premium gnome. That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, look at the soup. Broccoli cheddar. Yeah, this is a bougie gnome. Oh my. That guy's got the little heart on his side. That's somebody's little Valentine treat. Sleepy time. Yeah, that was tight. So now Oliver pulled out a really nice color. Honestly, one of my favorite colors. Right now we have a snail on the website that is made in this color. It's almost so light you can't even tell what it is, but this color is uh, at the moment named Whiskey. It's a super light, transparent brown. It's a beautiful color to work with. Never made a gnome with a shot glass on top, so that's the final one of a spontaneous, brand new style of gnome. It looks really easy, and I'm not trying to say this to boost our skills, to just take that and have it set up perfectly and cut it on there, and look at how symmetrical it is right now. Yeah. Now, he looks a little strange without the rest of his hat going on there. Kind of looks like he's missing his brain under there. And this is an OG hitter. Well, and he didn't just put orange on the bottom. He put about 10 vortextual vortexes. Blow lightly. Keep going. This is going to be a really cool application, folks. Keep going. Good. This is a, I'm sitting at the table sipping some really nice whiskey or some nice goat milk. When it's a one of a kind piece, I mean, it's cool. I'm gonna flip, take a look at it. Flip one more time. Push down as you're doing that a little. Yep. Spin. There, it's perfectly lined up. <laughs> and we don't always get it, folks, I'll tell you that. You've seen some treachery on the show before. The thickness is great, melds into the hat so beautifully. Well, there's a little bit of gold on there. Look at the little orange. Here it comes. Nice little flame action going up. Let's get her safe and sound. So we're gonna make a really cool piece here, folks. What we're gonna do is work with some crystal clear glass. And if you guys took a notice to this sweet bubblefication, num, 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 num. this is an all clear glass. We've got one heart left over. It's gonna be a rocks glass. Right now we're gonna paddle it as a team and we're going to flatten the bottom completely. Then we'll torch the bottom real good 
We're gonna drop the heart onto the bottom and push it up into the depths, into the gullet of the glass, and you'll be able to drink anything out of this glass. And as you're looking into it, you will see the loving heart that was sculpted here at the Glass Academy. The whole rest of the glass has gotten stiff, while the very bottom is super hot and malleable. <laughs> and the clear on the bottom there is gonna take that heart to the magnification station. We've got a glass, a tall mug that has a golf ball. That worked out. Good. Oliver, that actually was just the perfect size. Squish like a champion. Flipping. All good. All good. Look at that. Crispification. And with the white opaque background, wait till you guys see this heart on the annealer reveal. And actually, we're going to flip it around. We'll be able to show it off. It looks incredible. So we're going to be wrapping this one up. We're going to be getting this into the box here in a second to cool down. Pieces cool overnight. sweet show you guys and our gnomes are classic our gnomes are tasty our gnomes are good and they're nice and they're naughty and not nice these gnomes all have their own personality and turned out incredible uh, we'll start with the warmer upper though we went ahead and made about 25 of these yesterday throughout the day in varying different colors this was the warmer upper this one sold on the show this is such a fun product to make. These are so fun. Pulling it out as even as you can, getting them tucked together, getting a nice connection. And then the colors were just super fun to put different uh, Valentine's colors, but also just other beautiful colors together. Um, we're gonna have a bunch of these available. We might get these on the website as well, depending on which ones sell. Maybe they'll just be a Valentine's weekend holiday special, you know, each year. This is Chris's rendition of the heart. We switched it up a little and went with the ribbon heart. And this is pretty cool too. Now, if we were to put these on the website, open hearts, maybe we want to have two or three different styles. An optic twist one, a double color swirler, and then a ribbon style. I'm not sure, but you guys got to let us know what you think. This one's going to be put up for sale by the time the show goes live at three o'clock. Michelle wanted to analyze and look at this one a little bit, talk with Chris about the difficulty of it. We didn't want to just spontaneously throw a price on it. Gnome number one with the coolest little hearts one ever has done seen. And this is a certified jumper. And I think it was well worth the time. This is a pink hat, an expensive hat, nice swirly beard. You got some gold schnoz action. And then the three flowers coming across the top. It looks like a gnome you'd see out of a magazine or something. And I know gnomes are magazine dwelling very frequently, but they've become quite popular. And when things become popular, they get on the paper. The next one we did, which was super interesting, was the silver leafer. First time for Oliver and I working with silver leaf and soft glass. Um, we also noticed that Chris decided to put gold behind the silver leaf. So it started off really silver-like. When you iridize it, it almost turned into like a gold leaf looking type situation. But that just, look how nice that band went on there. Oh, on yeah. top of the schnoz. Now we've got the stamp no longer on the bottom or an extra add-on onto the back of the, of the gnome. It's pushed right into the belt. He's branded right there. 
So that just looks super clean. Just a slight bend of the hat. And obviously the puffy Valentine's heart on the side. This is a top-notch nice high roller. And then, first of its kind, the gnome shooter. Mm -hmm. He's not playing basketball. He's sitting at home. And you look at the way you hold this. I mean, you hold it like this. You could even put a thumb right on his schnoz like it's a thumb saddle on one of our mugs. <laughs> but, I mean, Chris did a great job adding color to match the hat but not doing too much that you can still see the liquid on the inside. And the giveaway, folks, the Valentine's super special giveaway, first of its kind, bam. And look at the magnification of that heart. This is exactly the same size as this one. And look at the way just having a thin layer of clear over top of that heart almost doubled the size of it. 